Jason, why, why are you Christian today? Why am I Christian? Because you could be Muslim. Why you are not <laughs> Muslim, I'm, I'm but not you are a, Christian? I'm, I'm not a Muslim, and I am a Christian because I know for a fact that the Quran says that Jesus did not die on a cross, and I know it, uh, John the Baptist said when he saw Jesus, "Behold, the Lamb of God." that takes away the sin of the world. And I know when Christ died on that cross, He took my sin away. He, he paid the price for me. He paid the debt for me. And Muhammad denies the cross. The Quran denies the cross. There's even stories where it, it showed that he hated the cross. I'm a Christian today because I know that Jesus is the Son of God and I know that He died on that cross and He gave His life for me and He rose again and He's the King of Kings and Lord of Lords and I would die in front of jihadists preaching that gospel because I believe it with all my heart and it's got evidence and the Quran's not got evidence. Jesus died, it's a fact. The Quran is totally wrong. There's no evidence for what they're saying. Oh, well, it's good to have you in our team and in our big family. So, um, what is the good news that people need to know in this broken world? The good news? Well, there's a story of a, a lady. She went to Puerto Rico, a young girl. She went to be a prostitute. And her mom um, tried to find her, couldn't find her. So she left pictures all over the hotels and all over the place, all the shops everywhere. She couldn't find her daughter, she'd come home, she was crying. And her daughter, with, with her client, because she was a prostitute, she'd come downstairs at the hotel, she goes into the toilet and she sees a picture of her mum. She grabs the picture and she saw it's her mum and then she turned it around and it said this, I don't care what you have done, come home. And the message of the gospel is that Christ Jesus, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. And when Christ died on that cross, he took the punishment for your sin and my sin, out of love for us. And now he says, all you who are heavy laden, I will give you rest. Come to him. Come home to him. And you'll find forgiveness and peace. You'll find restoration and joy and, and, and fellowship with God through Jesus Christ, who is our Lord and Savior. Amen. Um, so, like, how long have you been... Preaching Christ crucified. Yeah, uh, 25 years. Okay. Uh, that's long time. <laughs> okay. Question to you is: Within these 25 years, you are preaching Christ crucified in even different parts of different parts of the world, alongside of different parts of UK. So, yeah. So, um, what is the moment you can still remember? that shocked you within these 25 years? Have you got any moment? Um, That's personal, but um, we are family. I think, I think the only thing really is the apathy of the British people. Like I preached, I preached uh, on the streets, like doing street preaching. I've been preaching in churches for 25 years, the gospel, but street preaching, I've been preaching, I think about 10 years now. And I think what shocks me and saddens me is the British people, seem to be the majority just seem headlong wanting to reject Christian gospel and, and, and I find that very sad and heartbreaking and keep praying and I know you're praying and everyone is that Britain would wake up so that that's the most disappointing thing um, and we just pray that if this country doesn't wake up soon it's, it's heading for disaster so we just pray that it would wake up to the gospel but it's very sad when you're preaching and you sharing the gospel and, and many reject but there are good encouraging things as well but that that's the it, you asked that question so that's what is your top three reasons uh muhammad is not a prophet only top three my top three <laughs> is um forgive me muslims for saying this i love you to bits i'll do anything for you but i really believe and i believe this the more i look into it I was just reading this morning that he uh, he could have more women than his other fellow men. So what that tells me is that everything the Quran was engineered to meet is sexual, financial, to meet his needs really. And and so I, I I'm not impressed with Muhammad whatsoever to be honest. So I would, 
I, I just think but the most shocking thing to me, second one, and I think in fact it's the most shocking, is I read a hadith today, this morning, where he, he hated the cross. He, 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 would, he, he would run away from the cross. Yeah. And, and uh, for me, that's, that's a number one that he's not a true prophet because he, he, he's satanic, because he's against the gospel, he's against, Paul said, curse it. Is anyone in Galatians chapter one? Cursed is anyone who preaches not the gospel. Curse, and it, you know he's rejecting the gospel. And then thirdly, um, I think uh, the Quran. The Quran. I've I've read the Quran. I've been reading the Bible for thirty years. I never get bored of it. I've read novels and plays of great writers, Dickens and Tolstoy. But when I read the Bible. I can't outgrow it. It, it. It's new every day. It, it, it blesses you every day. It feeds your soul. But when I read the Quran, it, its style is no good. It's it's chopped up. The stories are no good. It's borrowed from the Bible everywhere and other other uh, Jewish sources, apocryphal sources. It, it just borrowed from all different sources. And 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 the Quran is is in no way the word of God. It's absolutely no way the word of God. So. So that's why I'm not a Muslim and why I don't think Muhammad is a, a prophet. Okay, um, this might be personal, but um, I think you would acknowledge with me that we don't born as a Christian. We yeah. born as a sinful human beings and yeah, in our yeah, lives, yeah, yeah, yeah. we make a choice to follow Lord Jesus Christ or choose to not follow him. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so when did you become a Christian? Why did you become a Christian at the first place? Uh, 30 years ago, I became a Christian. 30 years? Yeah, 30 years. I, came, I became a Christian. It's a long story, but I, I just short. The, two minutes version. Two, two, the two minute <laughs> version is some old ladies in the church showed me love in the church. And I read Spurgeon and another preacher called Dr. Martin Lloyd Jones. I began to be convicted of my sin. And I began to realize that Jesus Christ was the Son of God and died to save me from judgment. And it was through reading Dr. Martin Lloyd-Jones. Yeah, okay, and... Um, you do have your ministry, you've got yeah. your YouTube channel, Jason Burns YouTube. Yes, yes. And then you do have your website. So what is your ministry involved? You well, don't have to answer if you well, think that's my, personal. My, my ministry is, is basically I've been a pastor for quite a few years yeah. in the past. And um, recently, the last 10 years, I've been street preaching. I've been coming down to Hyde Park a bit, trying to help, help down here. Um, we always need help. Thank you. <laughs> but I, I'm basically really a Bible teacher. And uh, in, in a few months' time, I'm going to Africa to uh, be the president of a Bible college there. Uh, so my ministry really is teaching the Bible, but yeah. for, for the last 10 years, the Lord's been using me just to get on the streets and, yeah. and, and reach people. Yeah, and also, uh, as you teach the Bible, as a Christian, we all are responsible to know our Bible. Yes. So it is, um, we do meet sometimes Christian pastors, speakers, gonna, they are Christian, yet they never got a chance to study their own scripture, they never got yeah, a chance yeah. to meditate on their own scripture. So, um, we always encourage people to learn your Bible, love your Bible, and keep your Bible handy because the Word of God needs to be close to us. Yes. yes. So, you are traveling to um, Africa. Which part of Africa are you going? Uh, Ghana. In Ghana. Africa. Okay, good. And how long are you going to stay there and what are your responsibilities over there? Uh, I'm going to probably be there for about five years. I'll, I'll be the president of Grace Bible College and Theological Seminary. We have three staff, and we should have some more staff in the next year. And basically we're there to train young people to do mission and to train uh, pastors. And, and basically the reason why is I just believe that there's a need uh, in Africa for men and, and, and young people to know the Word of God uh, and, and to teach the Word of God rather than uh, just... There seems to be... I don't know if you've been in Ghana, but if you go in Accra, you have these billboards of these pastors advertising the churches, selling things, making money. I'm trying to, I want to help raise a generation that the word of God and feed the flock. Yeah. 
so there is false gospel is going around there yeah, and yeah. you will be preaching you will be helping people to learn what is real gospel and yeah, yeah. people to um, preach the real gospel oh well it's gonna be a big loss for UK for next couple of years but I am sure God is gonna use your gifts to bless many people over there Thank you. we pray that that five years like goes faster <laughs> <laughs> thank you, thank you.